thanks everyone for having us here. Uh, Nick Kale, CTO of Ericom, and we'll be talking about remote browser isolation. It's our approach to zero trust uh, internet browsing. So a little bit of uh, background about Ericom. Uh, we really have two families of products. We have a family of products that's uh, developed for secure application access. And then we also have uh, what we call our secure web access. We'll be talking about more or less the uh, secure web access today. And really, uh, you know, helps in a few areas around digital transformation, reducing complexity and cost, but also improving the user productivity uh, while using the internet and the experience that they'll have um, with using the internet. And so what, what a lot of our customers talk to us about is really kind of, um, you know, the known good and they have the known bad. And those are fairly straightforward to deal with with most of their security tools today. Uh, with the known good, right, we can allow our whitelists and we, we create blacklists for the known bad or blocks in our systems for those known bad sites. The really tough area um, is, is actually on the unknown. A lot of times what you'll see in the security products is what we call like uncategorized sites, new sites that are either fluxing up and down. Uh, so as those sites come up and they're uncategorized still, a lot of times your security tools will not know how to deal with those sites. You also have the concept of really overblocking um, sometimes just to be cautious. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. Some of the pain of underblocking, as you see, is a lot of the, the web-based attacks, uh, you know, increased by almost 60% in 2018. 42% of the breaches uh, really take place with the browser. And so if you think about that, that's not including the, you know, things like plugins and uh, all kinds of other tools that we add to our browsers. Just the browser themselves, 42% of the attacks take place at that browser. Social engineering and phishing attacks, 85% uh, of organizations now have experienced those. And again, with things like COVID-19 right now, these types of attacks are on the rise. Every time there's a large event, right, there's a, there's a rise in the social engineering and phishing attacks. 40% of uh, malicious URLs found on good domains. So things like malvertising, where the ad ecosystem uh, is, is breached basically by some malware or uh, malicious content. And so the pain of overblocking, uh, we, I touched on it a little bit, but uh, I see a lot of organizations that what they do is just to be safe or be secure. What they do is they, they tend to block more than maybe what they need to uh, just out of pre uh, precaution that they don't want to allow anything that, uh, that's bad to slip through. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of time managing the policy and um, you know, having your admins deal with your tools to, to create these policies and then live with them as you get a lot of support tickets and things asking you for opening sites, but also the loss of business productivity from your users. Um, you know, the users now are getting blocked on sites that maybe are legitimate sites that they need to go to for business. And so this creates a, a, a lot of issues for the end user. Remote browser isolation is what we'll be talking about today. It's really a preventative approach or what we would call a zero trust approach to, uh, to web security. And so when you look at our, you know, the next gen firewalls, secure web gateways, and a lot of the other uh, tools out there in the security industry, a lot, a lot of them have to detect. So what they're trying to do is scan the content or analyze that content in some way to use either signatures or some other method to try to detect whether it's malicious or not. Uh, so, you know, you'll see a lot of those types of tools where we don't do any detection. What we do is we assume everything's malicious. So we'll talk a little bit about how we isolate it uh, from the endpoints as we go through the presentation. So you'll see here just some analyst data, but you know, Gartner uh, says there'll be about a 70% reduction in attacks uh, or compromises against end user systems that use isolation. So pretty, pretty huge leap in security. It's really more or less a foolproof way of protecting the endpoint from malware at this point through the browser. So Zero Trust uh, Browser Isolation Service. Uh, we neutralize all the web-based malware. Like I said, the phishing attacks. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about each one of these areas, uh, but preventing malware, preventing those phishing or um, you know, other types of malicious attacks, and also 
controlling the user's interactions with uh, malicious downloads or any kind of download, to be honest. Uh, we can uh, inspect that download and, and uh, apply different policies to the download per, per the admin's uh, wishes. So when we look at it um, to the far left here, we've got some malware embedded in or active content. Uh, that that content is uh, is trying to retrieve, you know, be retrieved by the browser. Aircom takes that content and puts it into an isolated container. Think of it much like a VDI session for the browser. We take the browser and we pass it through a remote, uh, uh, connects to a remote browser. That remote browser is actually doing all the fetching of the internet content. And that internet content is then presented to the local browser in pixels or uh, we've got actually two methods we do either do pixel or what we call dom and so those those methods will stream that content to the to the browser but the person is actually viewing it on the remote browser so just uh, nothing interacting with the brow the local browser on the user's machine or the operating system on that local machine as well so what you'll see here is two examples uh, you know, what we've got is a regular browser and what it looks like on the left. And we've got content passing through Aircom Shield on the right. And that, that's being viewed through what we call remote browser isolation. So really no difference in the appearance. The user's still able to interact with uh, videos, click on links, fill out forms, um, you know, the same type of web experience that they would have native in the browser. But the big difference that we see here is if you look at you know, behind the scenes, what's happening. The regular browser on the left, we've got a lot of code. I mean, there's there's in this one, or about the typical site, about 152 JavaScripts, three CSS uh, scripts, and about 22 external, external URLs. And a lot of times that's how that malicious content, drive-by downloads, those types of things makes it into the browser is through these types of, uh, you know, external content that are fed into a website. By using Shield, you'll see that uh, when we're passing through isolation, we significantly reduce the footprint of the JavaScript and the source uh, source of the code. And there'll be only a few URLs. And if you were, you know, this is kind of hard to see at distance, I'm sure. But uh, you know, what what really is in here is just enough code for Aracom to stream that content from the remote remote browser to the local browser. Stopping phishing attacks. Uh, again, like I said, right now with any big event that takes place, uh, you know, there's there's a rise in phishing attacks and these types of uh, social engineering attacks and things that happen. Uh, while we're passing the site through isolation, we can also add controls for phishing. And if we we have a, a feed that comes into our product, we take uh, some some phishing uh, feeds from the uh, from different security vendors and bring it into the product and what we can do then is either known or uh, you know suspected phishing sites what we can do is we can render the keyboard useless at that point to where the user would not be able to input any credentials or information into a suspected phishing site so we can prevent uh, the users from being tricked into giving away information or giving away credentials in that phishing site we talked a little bit about earlier about uh, preventing malicious downloads and file sanitization, what we call CDR, so content disarm and reconstruct. And what we'll do is we'll allow the user to still download just like they normally would files. You can set policies around this though. So if you want, do want to block completely things like executables and then analyze the content and other files, you, you have that ability to get granular on the policy but the user tries to download it. At that point, we'll inspect it. Any active content in the document, it could be macros, links, videos, or other things that could be dangerous. What we'll do is we can strip that content out. We'll leave a stub behind saying that there was content removed. The file is then reconstructed. Uh, you know, All the originals are saved and backed up in the server, so the admin still has the ability to retrieve those original files. If if the user does come back to you or, or let you know that the file is a valid business file and that macro or uh, other content is actually legitimate, maybe they've been accepting this same file for years, right? They get a, a finance spreadsheet or something that has macros in it. So you can still retrieve the original, but, uh, but that user then would still be able to download the content. 
uh, risk-free. Uh, there's also different things like preview mode where we can copy that, cut and paste that content into a PDF and allow them to preview it in a, in a PDF viewer. So there's a few different modes that we can do around file handling. So here, um, what you'll see is that we typically are, are tied to or uh, partnered up with most commonly the secure web gateway vendors or next gen firewall vendors. And so pretty much you know, the entire list that you could think of of the top tier vendors um, in both these categories we're partners with. And then what we can do is from that device uh, or that, that technology, we can use their, uh, their URL filtering and we can make decisions based on what categories we want to isolate. Uh, some people, we call this targeted isolation, or we can perform full isolation. We can also do that by uh, things like Active Directory groups. Maybe you want your executives to go through full isolation while everyone else just goes through targeted. So for example, uh, uncategorized sites, uh, maybe all uncategorized and maybe um, you know, things like news sites or something else, you want to go through isolation. So the, the rest of your sites would go out natively to the internet. Um, also, you'd be able to still have your, <clears throat> excuse me, whitelist, blacklist, and all those things from your, your secure web gateway or next gen firewall, <clears throat> and then pass that content on to isolation. Uh, basically, it becomes the traffic cop, the uh, secure web gateway or next gen firewall. So, um, what I did was I tried to keep it as, as simple on the slides as we could. Um, if there's more information that you guys want to discuss or go more in depth on the technical details behind remote browser isolation, we'd love to have you visit the Ericom booth to learn more. And that's it for my presentation. I thank you very much. Uh, Nick, thank you very much. Uh, just I look uh, if we have questions from our listener. Uh, okay. We don't have question. Okay. G give one minute, maybe uh, sure. someone write on the chat. У кого есть вопросы, пожалуйста, пишите в чат. Мы их переведем и озвучим нашему спикеру. Uh, we don't have any questions, uh, so thank you very much, Nick. Thank you. Uh, we, you have a very interesting presentation. Thank you very much. Have a good day.